Hey everybody, this is Roadblock. Welcome back to the Defense Channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the USS Truxton. USS Truxton was a nuclear-powered guided missile cruiser of the United States Navy. Basically a heavily modified version of the Belknap class, USS Truxton was the U.S. Navy's fourth nuclear-powered surface ship after the USS Enterprise, USS Long Beach, and USS Bainbridge. The ship was named after Commodore Thomas Truxton, one of the original six commanders appointed to the Navy by President George Washington. As we stated, Truxton was basically a modified nuclear-powered version of the Belknap class cruisers. Truxton was laid down by the New York Shipbuilding Corporation at Camden in New Jersey on June 17, 1963, and the ship was launched on December 19, 1964. Originally planned to be a Belknap class ship, she was extensively modified in her design to become the fourth nuclear-powered ship in the Navy and is considered to be in her own class. At just over 8,600 tons of full load, Truxton is the smallest nuclear-powered surface vessel to have served in the U.S. Navy. She displaced 8,659 tons at a full load and was 564 feet long and could make 31 knots at top speed. The ship was powered by two General Electric D2G pressurized water nuclear reactors. Due to her nuclear power plant, Truxton had a range that was basically only limited by the supplies that she could carry aboard. The ship had a crew of 492 officers and enlisted men with flag quarters aboard. USS Truxton was equipped similar to the Belknap class in terms of sensors and her electronic systems, utilizing the ANSPS-10 surface search radar developed by Raytheon, the ANSPS-40 air search radar, which is a United States Navy two-dimensional long-range air search radar that is capable of providing contact bearing and range developed by Lockheed Electronics. The ANSPS-48 3D air search radar, which is a U.S. Navy electronically scanned array, which is a three-dimensional air search system. The ANSPG-55 fire control radar, which is a tracking and illumination radar for the Terrier and RIM-67 standard missiles. The ANSQS-26 sonar, which is a United States Navy surface ship bow-mounted low-frequency sonar developed by the Naval Underwater Sound Laboratory. USS Truxton was originally commissioned with a 5-inch Mark 42 gun mounted forward and a twin-rail Mark 10 missile launcher mounted aft for the RIM-2 Terrier missile, as well as two single 3-inch gun mounts and torpedoes. Later in her career, and similar to the Belknap class, the 3-inch guns were replaced with harpoon missile launchers and two phalanx Sea Whiz cannons were added. These upgrades were used on Truxton despite the ship not being included in the U.S. Navy's new threat upgrade program. USS Truxton's final weapon suite consisted of one 5-inch naval gun, one Mark 10 Mod 8 twin missile launching system, two Mark 32 torpedo launchers, two quad launchers for harpoon missiles, and two phalanx Sea Whiz cannons. Shortly after commissioning, USS Truxton departed Camden, New Jersey on June 3, 1967 for her maiden transit to the West Coast and her new home port of Long Beach and later on to San Diego, California. Truxton's voyage around Cape Horn included port visits to Brazil, Argentina, Chile, and Mexico. From January 1968 to August 1973, USS Truxton made four Western Pacific deployments. She was one of the first ships to respond to the USS Pueblo emergency. Truxton served primarily as the Positive Identification Radar Advisory Zone ship for Task Force 77 in the Gulf of Tonkin. Truxton was tasked to ensure safety and flight tracking services for U.S. strike aircraft, as well as maintain constant radar surveillance of the area, providing air defense against enemy aircraft during Linebacker 2 operations. In 1969, USS Truxton was awarded the Navy Unit Commendation for superior performance while operating with the U.S. 7th Fleet, and in 1971, received the Meritorious Unit Combination for operations conducted in the Gulf of Tonkin. USS Truxton made history in 1971 by becoming the first nuclear-powered surface ship to visit Yokosuka, Japan. She also conducted her 1,000th accident-free helicopter landing that year. During the 1971 cruise, Truxton demonstrated the unique capabilities of nuclear-powered cruisers to perform independent operations. Assigned to a special mission in the Indian Ocean, USS Truxton made the longest sustained high-speed run in history by steaming 8,600 miles at an average speed of 29 knots from Subic Bay in the Philippines to Perth in Australia. During October of 1972, while the ship was on her fourth Westpac deployment, USS Truxton resumed duties as the Piraz ship in the very familiar Gulf of Tonkin. Operating primarily off the coast of North Vietnam, Truxton was credited with directing fighter intercepts, which resulted in the destruction of 11 North Vietnamese MiG jets and the rescue of three downed American pilots 
earning the ship her second Navy unit commendation. In 1973, in the month of July, Truxton departed for her fifth Westpac deployment, resumed the same duties in the Gulf of Tonkin. In December of 1973, Truxton was the last ship out of the Gulf as U.S. active participation in the Vietnam War came to an end. Truxton returned to her home port of Long Beach, California on Christmas Eve in 1973. From February 1974 until June of 1975, Truxton underwent her first comprehensive overhaul and nuclear refueling at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard in Bremerton, Washington. Upon completion of the overhaul, USS Truxton, which at the time was still known as a destroyer leader, was redesignated as a Nuclear Guided Missile Cruiser, or CGN. In July of 1976, USS Truxton began a highly successful 6th Westpac deployment during which she steamed a record-setting 65,000 miles, making three round trips across the equator, including one at the international dateline. Truxton also gained worldwide media recognition as the first nuclear-powered ship to visit New Zealand in 12 years and the first to visit Australia in four years at the time. In 1978, USS Truxton again deployed to the Western Pacific as part of a nuclear-powered task group along with USS Enterprise and USS Long Beach. Truxton participated in numerous multinational exercises and conducted three separate rescue at sea missions. With her helicopter detachment unit embarked, Truxton set a record for all 7th Fleet cruisers and destroyers for LAMPS helicopter operations and flight hours during this cruise. From February to October in 1980, USS Truxton deployed with the USS Constellation Battle Group for her 8th Westpac deployment. Truxton remained underway in the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea for over 110 days without visiting a port other than the tiny island of Diego Garcia during this cruise. During her ninth Westpac deployment from October 1981 until April of 1982, U.S. Truxton deployed again to the Indian Ocean with the Constellation Battle Group. During this cruise, Truxton escorted the submarine USS Puffer past Singapore and into the Indian Ocean. This was the first time that a U.S. nuclear submarine had made a transit through the Strait of Malacca. From September 1982 until July 1984, USS Truxton underwent her final complex overhaul at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, which included upgrading the combat systems to their final configuration. On the 15th of January, 1986, USS Truxton left on her 10th Western Pacific deployment, this time serving as the anti-air warfare commander for Battle Group Foxtrot. In April, because of increased tensions in Libya and the Gulf of Sidra, USS Truxton was diverted to the Mediterranean along with USS Enterprise and USS Arkansas. After almost two months of operations in the Mediterranean, the three nuclear-powered ships were directed home and passed through the Straits of Gibraltar, the Cape of Good Hope, Western Australia, the Philippines, and Hawaii. By the end of the seven-month deployment, the entire nuclear battle group had steamed over 65,000 miles and operated in all four numbered U.S. fleets. On the 26th of October, 1987, USS Truxton departed again with battle group Foxtrot on her first Northern Pacific deployment and participated in one of the largest surface action group exercises ever to occur. Truxton deployed again with Battle Group Foxtrot in January of 1988 for her 11th Westpac Middle East deployment. Truxton also participated in Operation Praying Manus during this cruise. This cruise earned Truxton the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal and her second Meritorious Unit Commendation. Upon return from deployment, Truxton spent nine months in Puget Sound Naval Shipyard undergoing a dry docking selective restricted availability. On October 1st of 1989, Truxton's home port was shifted to Bremerton, Washington. On February 1st of 1990, Truxton deployed with the USS Carl Vinson in Battle Group Charlie. The Battle Group participated in Team Spirit 1990 with U.S. Marines and forces from the Republic of Korea. Later, during the same cruise and while in the Gulf of Oman, Truxton was tasked with escorting reflag Kuwaiti oil tankers during Operation Earnest Will. U.S. Truxton departed Bremerton for her 13th Westpac deployment on August 16th of 1991. Truxton performed duties as the Arabian Gulf Anti-Air Warfare Commander, Force Track Coordinator, Electronic Warfare Commander, and Alternate Anti-Surface Warfare Commander during Operation Desert Storm. Truxton also served as the commander of a mine countermeasures group during mine sweeping operations off the coastal waters of Kuwait. Following this, and after a short upkeep period in Bremerton, Truxton began a two-month counter-narcotic mini-deployment off the coast of Mexico and Central America, which ended in June of 1992. From the 12th of February, 1993 until August 1st of the same year, Truxton was underway for her 14th and final Westpac deployment. On the 19th of February, she began a high-speed transit from Pearl Harbor to Melbourne, Australia, 
covering 7,180 miles in 11 days at an average speed of 25 knots. On the 21st of March, Truxton rendezvoused with the USS Nimitz Battle Group in the Indian Ocean and transited through the Strait of Hormuz. While operating in the Gulf, Truxton conducted several multinational force exercises, including operations with the Kuwaiti Air Force. On the 22nd of April, Truxton was detached from battle group operations and proceeded to the Red Sea to enforce United Nations Security Council sanctions against Iraq by boarding vessels bound for the Jordanian port of Aqaba. Utilizing two teams, Truxton queried over 126 merchant vessels, boarded 73, and diverted seven others. In 1994, USS Truxton was the platform of choice for a variety of missions, which included participation as opposition forces for fleet exercises, providing naval gunfire support spotter services, and being deck landing qualification platforms for LAMPS helicopters. Truxton also served as the escort ship for the USS Reclaimer while towing a defueled nuclear submarine. She participated in two Chief of Naval Operations projects off the coast of San Francisco and conducted shipboard training at every opportunity. From the 23rd of May until the 17th of June, Truxton served as Coalition Forces flagship for CTF-331 during the highly successful RIMPAC 1994 multinational exercise. On the 18th of August, 1994, USS Truxton departed Bremerton on her final operational commitment. Originally assigned to escort the tow ships for two defueled nuclear submarines from Rodman, Panama, to Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, the orders ended up getting changed on short notice and Truxton was reassigned to Commander Joint Task Force 4 to conduct counter-narcotic operations for a second tour in, during the war on drugs. On the 3rd of September, Truxton transited the Panama Canal for the first time in her history and began patrolling the Caribbean Sea. On the 14th of October, and purely by a twist of historical coincidence, USS Truxton sailed the same waters in the Southern Caribbean Sea where the Constellation, under the command of Commodore Truxton, had dueled with the French vessel La Vengeance almost 200 years earlier. Truxton was decommissioned on September 11, 1995, and was stricken from the naval vessel register the same day. She was disposed of by recycling at Puget Sound by the 16th of April in 1999. All in all, Truxton was awarded seven battle stars and the Navy Unit Commendation for service in the Vietnam War. I want to thank you all for watching this video. This has been Roadblock with the Defense Channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share the video, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.